Hi everyone, this is Shauna with New to the Country Life and tonight I want to remake a mold. Um, a couple weeks ago I made this one, um, these little mini checkers and um, I, I put this into my vacuum pot which got most of the bubbles out but I didn't put it into the um, pressure pot to make sure there were no micro bubbles. So I don't know if you can see but down inside the mold there's spots where there's little bubbles on the pieces. And um, I just, I want a mold that doesn't have those in there. So I'm, I thought I'd make another one and I'd show you how. So I begin with a piece of glass. This is out of a dollar frame from the dollar store. Um, it's perfect size for this mold and glass makes a nice smooth surface for your mold. So that's what I'm using as my base. And here on my table, um, you can see my grid on here. And each grid has a dot exactly center. And it just happens that this mold works um, perfectly. If I use the dot in the center, I have the same number of pieces for the mold. So um, what I've done already is I've hot glued most of these down. I thought I'd show you how to do that though. So I'm just putting a dab on here in the center and then putting them down in that center spot so they're evenly spaced. And what this does is it when you pull the mold material in, it keeps it from moving and it keeps too much from going underneath of it. A little bit will still get underneath and we'll just cut that out. I'll show you how to do that in a minute. So basically, this is, this is my setup for doing the checkers. Um, for my side walls, I have this material my husband cut. Um, it's a plastic and silicone doesn't stick to it. And it's what I used to do my first mold. So I know it works well. It's a little, I'm a little short on size. When I put the pieces together around my glass, you can see I'm a little short here. So what I have is a couple extra pieces and I'm going to stand them upright to make up that difference. And I'll show you how to seal all that in so that um, silicone doesn't go through the cracks. But basically that's what our mold's going to look like to start with. Um, the very first thing I do is I start by gluing all these pieces together and then we'll go in and glue the bottom to it um, using hot glue because that um, will keep the silicone from leaking out. And I'm only going to pour this um, just above the checkers because you don't, you, you need a top on it but it doesn't need to be too terribly thick. So we're just going to start by gluing this frame together here. If you don't have material like this, um, what you can use is cardboard, plastic cups. I mean, there's lots of stuff you can do. I've seen um, the cardboard they take and they mold it with, or uh, paint it with beeswax, melted beeswax, to keep it from sticking to things. And um, that works really well. I'm going to just get this out of the way here. And I'm also pulling off, you know how hot glue gets stringy? I'm pulling that off because I don't want that to be in my mold. Um, so everywhere I see that, I'm just trying to pick it off and make sure that that's as clean as it can be.
I just put that piece on wrong, so I'm just pulling that off, that glue off. You'll want to fill any holes um, in your material with glue and you can also use packing tape um, works really good to seal off the edges and we might might do that we'll see so now I'm going to take it and turn it upside down here and kind of hang it off the table because of the weird angle I got going on with that and I'm going to run a bead around the inside of this and then we're going to place this upside down in there because it fits um, just exactly and I'll reach in from the bottom and we'll get that glued in and then we'll put another layer just to make sure it's sealed the hot glue won't affect the mold um, it the mold will take on the shape of that around the edge but that's okay it won't hurt anything This is just kind of a fun way if you have something that you want to make and you don't have a mold for it, um, you can always make your own. And this is a low temp glue, so I'm just kind of um, working it around, but it does dry kind of fast, so I'm probably taking a little long to do it. The more tedious you are at this part, the better mold you'll have. So now we're just going to set that right there in the bottom of that and lean it up in there. And remember, this is just, um, it's very inexpensive glass from a picture frame, so you don't want to put a lot of pressure on it because it will break. And now you can see there's a gap up here in the corner and we're going to fill that in and reinforce everything with the glue so that the mold um, doesn't leak anywhere. We're just going to fill all the gaps with hot glue. I'm going to pause this and do that, and then I'll come back when it's ready for the next step. So I've decided, um, I've glued all around the, the outer part, and I've decided to use just some packing tape. And I'm just running extra pieces along that glass and pressing it on against the glue, just an extra um, little protection. And I'm just kind of folding it where it needs to fold. It doesn't stick to the plastic really well, this part, but it's sticking to the glass very nicely. Okay, so that's got all of these edges on the bottom here covered and that tape sticks to the glass like I said very nicely it's a little flimsy on here but that doesn't matter okay so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go inside with the hot glue gun and I'm going to put a bead coming up these um, edges just to be sure the mold is sturdy and stays together and that um, 
nothing leaks out through those areas. I need a glue gun that's missing its feet. It, um, the feet make it where you can't get in the corners. I'm just using a chopstick to spread that in to make sure it's down in those corners okay. And that I'm not encroaching where my chest piece is because I don't want um, that distorted at all. And just to be safe, I'm gonna come right along these edges. Um, where the tape is not covering and fill those in with glue too. The silicone will find a way out if it can. So I'm just trying to prevent it from leaking anywhere that it might possibly come running out. Then just double check and make sure you've got it everywhere that it looks like anything could possibly, possibly leak out. I'm going to pull that tape up and catch this corner just to be sure it doesn't leak there. And we'll put the tape back over it. So I'm in, we're double checking here. We've gotten this corner, this corner, this corner, this corner. We've gotten this one and this one, and we did all the insides. So I think we're good. So that's a really easy way to build a mold if you have, like, uh, trinkets or different flat items this this type of mold works good for that let me get stuff out of the way here the next thing we're going to do is mix our um, silicone and this is a brand, it's called Smooth On, and this is the OOMOO-25. And this gives you about 15 minutes only of work time. It, so you have to move pretty quickly. There's another one that they have, and I think it's the same numbers, but 30 instead of 25. And it gives you a little bit longer work time, um, which is nice. But it's a little more expensive, so that's why I haven't, why I'm not using it. I've already done this. You have to stir these um, before using, and I did them um, 
before we came on camera so that you could see that. But it's a one-to-one -one mix. And um, what I'm going to do to measure this is I'm going to, this one's almost empty. So I'm going to pour it into um, this cup. And then we'll do equal amounts of this in this cup. You'll want to have gloves on. Um, it's very sticky and it can cause your skin to react. So I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to go ahead and get this poured in the two cups to measure them and then we'll come back and I'll show you how to mix them, degas them, and then we're going to put them in the pressure pot to get the, that nice mold with no bubbles in it. So we're going to start by pouring the two parts into one container to start the mixing process. And again, it's a one to one mixing ratio. And when you put it in the degasser, it's going to bubble up, or the vacuum pot, it's going to bubble up a lot. So we want um, a container that's got at least three times more room than the material that you're using to give that room to bubble. I'll show you that on the camera when we do it. And what that's doing is it's going to vacuum all the air bubbles out of it so that when we pour it, um, you just don't have like hidden bubbles in it that show up later. Like the mold I showed you earlier where it has the bubbles in it. Okay, so it's like a green and blue and when you get it mixed, it's a nice blue color. And you wanna mix it until you don't see any streaks of the green in it any longer. If you don't get it mixed good enough, what will happen is you'll do your mold and then when you go to take it apart, pieces of it will be really gooey and it will never harden. It, it's just not usable. So you want to make sure that you get it stirred and you're working kind of fast because like I said, once you start mixing this, you only have about 15 minutes of work time. And just like resin, you scrape the sides, scrape the bottom. You want to make sure you're scraping your stick off, getting as much as that of that mixed in as possible so that you don't have any areas in there that aren't good. Okay, so you can see it's all a solid color now. And I'm going to bring you over here to the other pot. So you're familiar with this pot from my other videos. This is the pressure pot and we are going to use this. But for right now, we're going to move over here to the vacuum pot. So this works off of a vacuum pump that's sitting right here. And we're going to put, we take the top off and we're going to put this down inside. And while it's working, I'll um, aim the camera down in there so you can see what it's doing. Let's get you some light. So we do this by making sure that this very thick acrylic top is on equally. There's a rubber seal that's black around here and you want it to be on as even as possible because this is going to vacuum, it's going to pull this lid down. So we're going to open this valve which allows it to vacuum and we're going to close this valve that's holding the vacuum inside this pot. and um, it's. I'm going to go ahead and leave the, the mic on. I'll move away so hopefully it's not too loud. But I want you to be able to look down in there and see what this is doing. So if it's too loud, you might want to pause your or mute your TV. 
or however you're watching it. And here we go. The smoke you see coming out of it is the vacuum pump has a, it's oil based that runs it and that burns off a little bit every time we start it. There's a gauge here on the front and I don't think you can see it clearly, maybe you can. It's pulling that vacuum, so it's went from zero, and now we're almost at negative 25-ish pounds. And you'll see this is starting to rise up, and it's gonna foam up, and all the bubbles are gonna come to the top, and then it's gonna collapse. And when it collapses, we know it's ready to open it up and take it out. If it gets all the way to the top and looks like it's going to overflow, I'll open this or close this for a second. See, there it goes. Now what that's done is brought all those bubbles to the surface and they popped. So now we just slowly open it and you have to slowly open it because when you, when you do, Behind this gauge is a valve and it allows air back in. And so if you do it too fast, it'll blow your material all over the place. And you can see it's releasing the vacuum. And we wait till this is down to zero. The lid won't open even if you try because it's got pressure still on it. And then we pull it out. And that's all there is to vacuuming. Get you back over here in your spot. Now I've put down some wax paper in case anything does leak out. Um, the key to pouring the mold material is to start in a corner and let it free flow toward the middle so that you're not trapping any air bubbles in there. So we're going to start just here in this corner and hopefully you'll be able to see this. You start with a small stream and I'm going to just go around the outer edges first and just let it flow into the mold. And it just starts to move around on its own and flow to the center. Whoops. That's why we put paper down. <laughs> I didn't say this was a clean project. I just said it was an easy one. And as this starts to set up, it gets harder and harder to get it out of here. So that's when I use, um, this is a silicone spatula silicone does stick to silicone so if you don't clean it off it keeps adding to it but it, it's what I use to clean this Now the molds that you buy like on Etsy or Amazon, they're done in a little bit different way. They have um, jigs set up where they pull, pour lots of those at once. And that's why like they're shaped, the outer edges are usually shaped like whatever it is that you're pouring. And um, they're a different type of silicone. Um, 
but there's lots of kinds of silicone, so. This is one that I found that does good for making molds like this. Now we're just gonna take a paper towel and wipe stuff down and try to clean up my mess a tad bit. You can see from pouring it, there are some little bubbles on top. Um, those are gonna be pulled out in the pressure pot. But what I'm gonna do is this is starting to set up and it's not moving into the corner, so I'm gonna help it with my little spatula and I'm just kind of like frosting a cake. We're just gonna make sure that everything's covered and it's all down so it has an even bottom. That way when the mold is finished and it sits on the table, it doesn't have um, lumps or anything in it so it doesn't set crooked because you don't want that. Nobody likes it when their mold is not level. And at this point, it's starting to set up a little bit, so it, it won't really self-level like resin does. Once it starts to set up, it kind of holds whatever shape it's in. I'll show you how to clean all that up in a little bit. Next, we're gonna move it to our pressure pot and I'm just gonna go up like this so you can see it. The pressure pot has an air hose that hooks to it that um, puts air in. The other one had a vacuum pump that pulls the air out. This has a pump that puts air in so that it's under pressure. So we're gonna take our mold and we're gonna set it down in the bottom here. And it just fits, so we have to be kind of careful with it. I didn't measure that beforehand, so I probably should have. And I'm gonna get this out of the way so I don't get silicone on everything. Okay, so now we're gonna put the top on it. I have arrows to show me where to line it up. And the reason you do that is you want the pot to always go on the same way every time because the seal inside, um, this seal right here, you don't want it to get munched or anything. So you don't want to put your lid on and turn it or anything like that. You want to set it down exactly where it belongs. And then we tighten these. Um, you try to do it equal pressure on both sides so that one side's not compressed a lot when the other side isn't. So I get them started. I loosen a couple or tighten a couple at a time until they're all tight. And they have to be very tight because you're putting about 50 pounds of pressure into this. And the last thing you want is to have the lid um, blow off because you don't have these tightened down enough. That's a lot of pressure going in there. This is my air hose attachment. Um, you just pull up on this and push it down and it attaches to that. gaining air pressure already. We're going up to about 50 to 55 pounds of air pressure. We have it set automatically um, by adjusting this release valve so it won't go over that. This 
this is actually what sets it and this will go off if it goes over that and needs to release the pressure. There's a, uh, I'll put a link in the description to where I got the pressure pot um, parts and I'll put a link to where I purchased the vacuum pot. I'm going to pause the video and let this um, get up to pressure and then we'll come back. Okay, we're back. The pressure is up. It shut itself off. We're gonna close this valve to hold the pressure and I go ahead and release this. Now it needs to sit um, 65 minutes at least. Um, so while we're waiting for that, I'll show you how to clean up the silicone. The part that I clean up right now are um, only my silicone spatula because if I keep leaving that on there, it just keeps building up and I just wipe it off. It doesn't hurt to have it on the handle, but on the this portion, it just keeps building if you forget to do it, which you can tell I've done. And then I set that aside. Uh, the next part to clean is actually an old one because what, what you do is you just throw the one you just used on the shelf and next time you're ready to use it, you just go in and it peels completely off. And you can save this because you can chop it up and if you're making a big mold, you can use it for filler in there. But you can see it just comes off in big um, globs and it's super easy to clean as long as you've just let it sit. Let it, you know, for an hour, however long it takes it um, to cure and then you can clean it. So what I do is I clean my spatula and set it aside. And then I'm going to take the cup that we used tonight and I'm just going to set it in there and I'm going to dispose of everything else and wait for the cleanup to be easy. I store this under my shelf um, and just when I use it, I just clean it for the that use because it doesn't hurt to leave everything in there. We're gonna come back when it's time to open the pressure pot and we'll take the mold apart and see how good we did on building our um, checker mold this time. Hopefully we get one that doesn't have little holes in the pieces so that we get nice pores out of that. So good morning. We let this sit overnight. Um, it only needed to sit for 65 minutes, but I got busy doing other stuff. So um, we're going to open this pressure pot now. So I'm going to start by loosening this valve and it's going to let air out. And then I'm going to open this valve and it'll release the rest of the air and then we'll open the pot, but I just want to warn you, this might be loud on the mic. So um, if you need to mute your TV, go ahead. We're just waiting for the pressure to go completely to zero and the sound of air to be stopped. Okay, so when we open the pot, we open it the same way that we closed it. So we go around and try to release the pressure kind of evenly. So here's our mold and we're just going to start disassembling it. So we'll start pulling, pulling the tape and then we'll pull the um, other pieces off and start getting this taken apart. 
that's what the bottom looks like where we glued the pieces in place. And when we pull these out, we'll do some trimming to make these perfectly round. But that's what the bottom of the mold looked like. And we're remembering that that piece of glass is thin, so I'm not going to put a lot of pressure on the glass. We're just going to try to get the mold off and hopefully actually leave the pieces stuck to the glass. So if I need to make another mold, they're already set up. You see the silicone separates nicely from the um, pieces or the silicone mold. And I'm not putting pressure on the glass, just on the, the pieces so that they come apart nicely. Okay, so now what we're going to do is I'm going to work this mold um, off the glass. It's kind of like when you're releasing resin, you just kind of work it around. I'm going to try this little, this is a Cricut tool for removing vinyl, but I'm going to try to see if I can get under here and break that section so that'll come off nice. I'm being careful not to damage the mold. I'm just trying to get air in there so it releases from the glass. And just be patient doing this. It'll start to pull away. And you got to remember all of these checkers are stuck in there. So I was thinking that hopefully the checkers would stay. But I think what I'm going to do is put a little heat on this and melt that glue. So that, that glass pops off of those checkers. And then I'll pick the checkers out. This is low temp. Uh, glue so it shouldn't take too much to break that Okay, so you can see that's working. I'm just going to continue working that along um, the edge to make sure that these don't re-glue back to the glass as they cool. And I'll come back when we've got that done. So I'm having trouble getting this off. And another trick that I've learned is to use some kind of soapy water or cleaner. Um, right now I'm using the Myers Clean. And as I pull it back, I spray a little in there and then I'm using my little knife and slowly working it down in there and everywhere that that 
um, liquid works its way in, it releases from the glass right away. So um, just a tip in case you get stuck with your mold. You can see everywhere I, I just kind of push that down in a little at a time and allow that liquid to get down in there and it coats it and it's I'm making progress of getting that out. There is mold release that you could spray on the glass and I did not do that. So um, the other times I've made it with glass I've not had this trouble. For some reason it silicone really wants to stick to this uh, mold material but I'm just going to keep working that down in there because this is working. It's keeping the mold held together and we're making progress. So I'm going to between doing this and then heating up each of the checkers as I go um, and I'll get them to release and be able to pull them out so that the glue that's holding them to the glass isn't holding them to the holding the mold to the, the glass anymore. So I'll just keep working on this and I'll come back when I get it all taken out. Okay, so I've almost got it taken apart. I'm just going to finish this last little corner here. And then we'll take the rest of the checkers out and clean it up so you can see what it looks like. And all I've been doing is just spraying a little spray and working it just like you're seeing now. Just going along the edges and working the little pieces out. So... I guess one tip I would give, and I didn't give it earlier because I've not had this problem before, um, is to use some mold release on your glass. This is the first time I've had it stick this badly. Um, and it's okay that it's on camera because that's why you watch, so you can get tips, right? Well, there you go. Now you got to be careful with that glass so you don't hurt yourself. And that's why I was telling you it's real thin glass, so be careful. We just got this one little corner left to get out. There we go. Okay, so we're just going to dispose of that glass. And when I bought molds, I actually... Um, got a frame that for some reason had two pieces in it. So I got extra glass anyway. Okay, so let's clean up all the cleaner and dry the mold off. We'll pop these out. And they're demolding very nicely, which means the pieces I pour in there will demold, demold uh, very nicely as well. Demold. Okay. Now you see we have all this extra stuff on here. You, it literally will just, when it's dry, you can just pick it off and clean it up. But I'm more concerned about making these a little rounder. And if you look down in, um, like this one looks pretty good. You can look down in there and you can see where the checker is going to set and it has a little overlap. Um, with your utility knife, if you carefully just follow that uh, line from down inside, you can trim these up so that you can see where the resin goes and it um, makes it even that much easier to demold it later. And you just go around and do this to all those little holes until you get them you know, where you want them. Being careful not to cut into where the actual checker is. This is just to clean up that opening. Okay, so that's that's my next step is just to come in and clean all this up. Open these holes up bigger so you can actually see where the checker is. And to get this dried out so that we can try to pour it later. You don't want to pour resin where you've had water or cleaner because it reacts with the resin in a bad way. So this mold, since I got it so wet, is going to have to sit and dry for a few hours before I can pour it. But 
at least this video gives you a little idea of how to make a mold and problems that you could run into and hopefully you avoid some of the mistakes that I made in this video by using mold release. When the glass comes off properly, the top of the mold is shiny and skinny like, or shiny and um, slick like this side is. But this is nothing that we can't deal with. This doesn't affect the pour at all. It's just the way the mold looks um, isn't as pretty as it could be. But we'll get it cleaned up and we'll have a new checker mold to pour and life will be good. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Um, if you need to get a hold of me, you can also find me on Facebook at New to the Country Life and send me a message from there. You guys have a good day.